Today on Redneck Ramblings, we're going to talk about a coffee rum wash. Stay tuned. Howdy, welcome. Today we're going to take a look at my coffee rum wash. And uh, we're going to talk about it briefly. So I have 10 gallons of this, uh, 5 gallons per bucket. These are 7 gallon buckets, so I had to split it up a little bit. I need uh, about 10 gallons for my still, so that's where we got the 10 gallons at. Are you ready? Oh, I'll flip that upside down. Woo! That was busy. Let's drop a hydrometer down in there and just, uh, I suspect we're going to be right at the bottom. Yeah. So we're bobbing between, uh, it looks like we're down around 1.000, possibly a little bit lower. Yeah, it looks like we're right about 1.000. So she's done. Um... This right here is a is a is what I'm going to call a rum a coffee rum wash. It's made with three ingredients. It's made with brown sugar, um, molasses, and coffee, and that's in uh, five gallons of water. And each one of these should be identical. They were made at the same time with the same ingredients. But I tell you what, let's uh, let's get us a little glass here, and I'm going to taste this because this technically. Right now, this is a beer. You could technically, um, you probably want to filter it, um, you, but you could bottle it and uh, chill it and drink it just like you do beer. Um, let's see what she tastes like. I'm expecting a very strong molasses flavor. All right, that's what she looks like in the glass. Very dark color. I tell you what, that coffee, wow, that coffee is a lot stronger than I expected. You know, I, th I thought the, the coffee would be a, a more subdued in here, and uh, the molasses would really uh, overpower it. But I'm telling you what, that coffee's got a, got a really good aroma. Let's take a sip of this. It tastes like beer. You know what, I can taste that coffee. Wow, that's that's actually surprising to me. I thought I thought the molasses flavor would uh, overpower that coffee, but I tell you what, um, that coffee is uh, that coffee's loud and clear. It's there. It is definitely there. No question about that. All right, I'm not gonna drink much more of that, but yeah, right now that's a, that's technically a beer. You you could call that a beer. It would be a sugar beer because uh, it is made with. Uh, brown sugar instead of uh, um, grains but that's technically a sugar beer what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this in my uh, still and I am going to make some coffee rum out of this and um, at the very end of this video you're going to see a tasting of that coffee rum so stay tuned for the end but for right now I'm going to uh, Turn this camera off and I'm going to start putting this into my still. I'm going to get it warmed up. Stay tuned. Fun stuff's yet to come. So I thought I'd give you a really quick glimpse of uh, how I'm filtering it. I basically am transferring from my 7 gallon bucket into a 5 gallon bucket with a filter bag on it. Now there's lots of things you can use for a filter bag. You can use a paint strainer bag. Um, they actually make uh, uh, brew bags that you can use to uh, uh, keep your mash from scorching on the bottom of your pot when you're cooking it. This is actually made for honey, but it's made for, so it's specifically made to fit a five gallon bucket. So that's why I'm using a five gallon bucket. And the seven gallon bucket gets a little heavy going into the still. Um, I have filtered pouring into the still before and I don't like it because if you have one mess up, um, you're, you're emptying your still and doing the whole thing over again. This way here, if my, if my uh, filter bag does go down in the bucket, I just dump the bucket back into the 7-gallon one and do it over again. So, 
I just wanted to show you that real quick. I am filtering it. Um, it'll pull out anything that's all, that any kind of a, a residue that may be in there because you, you you did see from the bucket. You can see on the left hand side on this bucket, it had a pretty active fermentation. That's a um, that, that sugar in that molasses really went nuts with that. You know, that yeast really went nuts on the sugar in the molasses. So, and uh, we have have confirmed all the sugars gone. I can taste the molasses in there, and I can taste that coffee. So let's go ahead and get this in the still, and I'll show you what we're doing next. All right. So this is what it looks like in the still. This is a 16 gallon kettle, and you can see that with uh, 10 gallons in there. I got plenty of headroom. I'm not worried about it uh, foaming up so much that it pukes. And it has got uh, plenty, plenty of uh, uh, liquid over my element. So we should not have any problems here at all. But uh, if we do, I'll let you know. And uh, like I said, stay tuned for the end of this video. We're going to taste it and see what it tastes like. So we are well underway here. Our temperatures are up to about 85, 90. And look at that bad boy. That is just a traditional st still head. I'm uh, not using copper packing in that. I'm not using reflux. Um, the way I'm gonna cool it, uh, the way I've been cooling it, I just recirculate water through this barrel. This is about 50 gallons of clean water. And I'm using a pond pump in the bottom, and I'm getting uh, that kind of flow right there. That's uh, plenty of water to cool this condenser. So, I'm going to turn that uh, pump off until we're ready. So it's been about two days since I started making this video. I kind of got busy, but this is the result of my run from the coffee rum wash. Um, I have a total of about five quarts. Um, and they proof anywhere from 140 to 130 coming off the parrot. So I'm going to put all this into a jar and uh, we're going to try and proof it down a little bit and then we'll do a taste sampling. Be right back. And here we are. We have a uh, over a gallon. Uh, these are one gallon jugs but they actually hold about, uh, about five quarts. Um, we have a gallon, we'll just call it a gallon, of coffee rum and uh, we're gonna do a little tasting here we're gonna see what she tastes like because I've sampled it um, jar by jar and I've sampled little pieces here and there but um, this is fully blended and I will tell you I have not um, I have not cut this so this is right now a hundred and forty two proof and um, see if I can get a picture of that I don't know if I can or not uh, of course, it's going to spin on me, but I would just call it 142. It's 142, 144, somewhere in there. And um, right now, I've not cut it, and honestly, it tastes so good that um, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time uh, cutting it down. Although, if you're going to drink it, it's going to have to be cut down or mixed. So, I got me a towel because I, I know I'm probably going to make a mess here doing this, but let's see if I can pull this over to where you can see it. Let's pour, a, let's pour a little bit here, and uh, let's taste it. So let's just spill it. I suck at pouring out of these gallon jugs. That's why I have decanters, and that's why I have a towel. So you can see the uh, empty mason jars in the back. I did use all of them. Um, the last one, I was questioning whether I was going to use it, but it was getting really close to the tails so I uh, but I used it because it tasted good and the uh, flavor was fantastic in it and uh, as you get closer to the tails there's a lot of weird things that happen the, the bottom end of the hearts you start getting a lot of flavor but you also start getting fusel oils and uh, bad stuff coming into it so if you you can take a little bit at the top of the tails and uh, get a lot of flavor off of it and, um, but look how clear that is I like that the thing that really, oh man, it smells good. So I've, I've done stuff with rum, with uh, uh, molasses before. I've made rum. And uh, the one thing I know about that I've, from my previous experience with molasses is that molasses is loud and proud. It comes through that still with uh, lots of flavor. Say hi, my kitty. 
and uh, lots of, of, of smell. You can tell what it is. Um, it does not hide in a distillate. It comes through loud and clear. The thing I was not sure about was how the coffee was going to do, but man, I tell you what. Oh, you can smell it. So you can smell the coffee and you can smell the molasses in this. And uh, the molasses is right there. I mean, it just what I expected. The molasses is right up front. Um, it's, it, it is a dominant smell, but I was afraid that the molasses would completely dry out the coffee. And it did not. Man, you can... Sorry, I got to keep smelling it. It just smells so good. That's, um, I, I don't know how the flavor would change if I use a different grated coffee or a different kind of coffee. I might try using a dark roast next time and just see if it changes the flavor or not. But man, I am so impressed with how that coffee came through. I am going to, this is going to be a part of my regular rotation here. But uh, we are going to, we are going to sip on this at 142 proof. Because, like I said, I'm having a problem uh, bringing myself to uh, diluting it. Plus, I've, I, I can't fit much anymore in that uh, gallon jug. So, I'm going to have to split it across two jugs or pull a quart out and uh, proof it from that. But, let's, let's, let's have a taste here. Man. Oh. I tell you what, for 142 proof... You cannot tell that it's 142 proof. I mean, seriously, it does not have the burn I would expect from 142 proof. Don't get me wrong. It's got, it's got a bite. It is hot. But, man, right there on the lips, it is sweet. Even this hot, it's sweet. You can taste those molasses. And uh, you, you get a hint of the coffee right up front. But then on the back side, it's all coffee. The molasses flavor the sweet from the molasses just goes away and you got the coffee and the coffee just lingers uh, it just lingers right there oh man that's good so i will uh i'll do another video where i actually show my recipe for doing this this recipe is actually based on uh, uh one of my uh a recipe from one of my uh my fellow mason jar mafia one of the crazy eight he goes by uncle jc on here and uh so you'll be seeing some, some more stuff from him as well. But this is his recipe. And, uh, well, I base mine on his recipe. I may have used a slightly different uh, calculations for my ingredients. But it is based on his recipe. And I can see why he makes it. That is really good. I like that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to drink all of this at 142 proof. It is early in the day. And I don't want to be on my, uh, on my butt doing nothing. So, But that's it. 142 proof coffee rum i give it two thumbs up i'll be making that again thank you have a good day